Qualified Engineering. This is our 93 Mark 8. Uh, a lot of people were asking about what we were doing and why we were doing it. Uh, ultimately, it boils down to a project that was going to be for a grudge race against one of my friends. This wasn't supposed to be a YouTube video. It was something we were going to do already. Um, he has a first-gen Camaro with an, a Turbo LS in it. Um, he's a terrible drag racer. And we're going to really rely on beating him based solely on that. Ultimately, the goal with the project was to put a 32-valve modular Ford engine into a third-gen Camaro. I already bought the Camaro. I have three of these engines right now. Um, the goal was to go nines for under $7,000 and beat Matt's Camaro, which we still intend on doing. Good. stuck at about 9 psi of fuel pressure so on the first start in the first video you can see right at the end of it we realized we had too much fuel pressure I had Zach shut the car off we had already flooded the intake manifold with gas I tried to reduce the fuel pressure I actually unscrewed the um, adjustment screw all the way to basically drop to zero when I had Zach restart the car it lit the inside <laughs> snowball just flew in here it lit the inside of the intake from the evaporated gas and the plenum's too large so it actually blew the uh, passenger side of the intake manifold off so i was pretty bummed about that wasn't sure what i was going to do and ended up getting over it welding a uh, new piece on the side of it got it fixed it's not perfect and then we duct taped a fuel return line down the side of the car and ran it into the fuel fill and just bypass the factory fuel return because there is a check valve on the bottom of it to prevent it from bleeding down when you leave your car off overnight. 
that did end up working. It's not the greatest solution. It worked for what we needed to do. Um, then we had issues with, I believe, vacuum signal of the carburetor, being able to draw enough fuel out of the bowl because I don't have adjustable um, air bleeds in this carburetor. It's just a random carb I bought from a guy at work. It worked well. I took it apart, checked it out, set it all back to factory settings, put it back together. We ran it. It was ridiculously lean. We kept going up in jets. And I think we ended at 8490, which is way too big for a 281 cubic inch engine, and it's still lean. So there are some inherent issues with this design. Um, ultimately, this drivetrain is not going to go in the Camaro. The intake plenum is too big. The rudder length is too short. The plenum size was based on getting five and a half inches of um, plenum depth underneath the carburetor. And the intake runner length was determined by the amount of metal I had on the shelf divided by 16. So this wasn't ideal, it was just a proof of concept to see if the factory ECU would actually be able to control the spark reliably and the trans would shift using the throttle position sensor from uh, innovative motor or innovative motorsports. I don't know, it doesn't matter. We are using it. Um, it didn't make the power I needed it to make. NA, I'm gonna have to run too much boost to be able to run better gas and not adjust the timing. So ultimately it's going away. I'm gonna have to go to an MSD Mod 6 ignition. Um, I'm probably going to buy a JW Ultra Bell, go to a Turbo 400 and abandon the AODE, which is what is in this specific car. The other two drivetrains I have are for our 70Ws. I'm going to sell them, I'm not going to use them. This whole drivetrain, we have something else planned for it, you'll see soon. Um, we tried a 600 CFM vacuum secondary carburetor on it, I got from Mike Floater, I appreciate that. Um, took that apart, cleaned it up, put it back together, set the factory specs. Um, ultimately, it didn't work either. It had a better low end torque curve. But without a metering block in the back, only a metering plate, I couldn't control fuel up top. We ran out of time. This thing needs to go away. It's not going to make the power it needs to make. Um, the next intake will be significantly different. It'll be a uh, more up-to-date intake. Um, I'll use the plastic IMRCs that are like a Cobra Mustang that I already have the intake manifold off a 98 Mark A that I'll be cutting up and making that intake from. But we learned a lot from it. It worked well. It did ultimately make more power than the factory fuel-injected engine up top it made a lot more power. Down low, it didn't work that well. I think it, I can adjust that with intake runner length and plenum volume, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. It worked okay for scrap metal intake.